Thank you, Brother Muhammad Sheikh, for enlightening us and increasing our knowledge of Quran. We'll start the question answer session now. Ladies may go first, and then we'll take questions from the gents. You may line up here for the questions. Brother Muhammad Sheikh, would you like to come on the stage? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My my name is Nulan, and my question is: You mentioned in your lecture that Torah is the law, which is the mother of the book, um, governing ayats. What about the uh, resembling ayats? Can you clarify them from the Quran? Okay. Uh, in my lecture, the first Surah Al Imran, three seven ayah, I was discussing where we got the Markham ayat. ayat. I will re repeat that portion, Surah Al Imran, three seven. It is in the booklet also. I will read, Huwa alladhi anzala alayka al-kitab minu ayatum muhkumat hunna ummul kitab wa ukharu mutashabihat. Your question is about the resembling ayahs and mutashabihat ayat. You see, there is a lecture of mine which deals this subject in detail, but I will just give you one reference to explain what are the resembling ayahs. The muhkumat, we know the mother of the book, the ummul kitab, the muhkumat or the governing ayahs. What are the mutashabiyat or the resembling ayahs? If people here in the audience who have read the Quran, the book, if you will note, there there are the muhkamat like we have read today, the governing ayahs. We were reading few governing ayahs. But in the end, I read narration. A narration of the sons of two Adam, the sons of Adam's sons, two sons, and a narration of Musa, peace be of, a narration. So in the Quran, Surah Zumar 36, so you can write down the reference, Surah Zumar 39 and Ayah 23. Allahu nazzala asal hadithi kitabam mutashabiyam mathani. Tak sha'iru minu juludu ladhina yakshawna rabbahum, thumma talinu juluduhum wa quluhum ila dhikrillah, thalika hudallahi yadi bihi man yasha, wa man yudillahu fama lahu min had. Allah has revealed the most beautiful hadith, the event or narration of the, as a book. Mutashabi means resembling, repeating itself. So in the Quran you will note there are two types of muhkamat is the orders or the, or the governing ayahs. The other is the narration of Adam, narration of Ibrahim al -Islam, narration of Musa al -Islam, narration of Isa al -Islam, narration, event. And that is his asal hadith. So the book of Allah contains hukum, muhkamat ayahs, governing ayahs, governing ayahs, orders. The law, the mother of the book, the Torah. And the other is there are ayahs which are narrating an event or narrating a narration about narration of Adam, peace be upon him, narration of prophets, peace be upon him, Musa, peace, Musa, Isa, Muhammad, Salah, all these messengers' narration. And that is Allahu Nazala Asal Hadith. Kitabam Mutashabia. This is a book resembling. These events are again, again, then again, and they, they repeat, the narrations are repeated within the book, and they are resembling. So Allah is describing, those who fear from the Lord, their skin shiver and their hearts are softened towards the remembrance of Allah. That is the guidance of Allah. He guides whom He wills with it, and to whom Allah leads astray, so for Him there is no one that can guide. So you must understand that Quran is divided into two aspects, like the Bible is in Old Testament and the New Testament. The Quran gives ayahs which have got orders or mokum, governing ayahs, and narrations or the events of, of prophets about science, about geography, about everything is a narration, a hadith. That's the last hadith. And I give you one ayat, and you, you tell me, is this an order or a hukum or a narration? Surah Baqarah 2, 185. Sharu Ramadan fi nas wa bayinatim min al wal furqan. Ramadan is the month of, in which the Qur'an was revealed, a guidance for mankind, and is a criteria and a furqan, a guidance. What is this order? Huh? This, is, this portion of an ayah is as in hadith, means a narration. Then the same ayah says, فَمَنْ شَيْدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّرَى فَالْيَسُمُ So whoever is, is a witness should fast. What is it? Torah. This portion is Torah, the other is as in hadith. So even within the ayah, Itself, you can see the, the narration is as hadith and at the same time an order. But some ayahs are simple orders and some ayahs are mixed. So we cannot differentiate. We can read it and identify this is orders. 
like I read an narration of Adam and his two sons, and I read a narration of Musa, peace be of narration. So this is Ahsan Hadith, this is Mutashabiyah and Masan repeating. So these narrations are resembling and repeating also within the Quran. So that is Ahsan Hadith. The, the others are the Ahsan Hadith, Mutashabiyah. Thank you. Um, One song. Uh, my name is Dua, and my question for you today is We have heard that the punishment for adultery and homosexuality is stoning to death. What does the Quran say about that? Okay. You see, we must always have a comparison of the Bible and the Quran. You see, in the Quran, what is she question? What is the punishment of homosexuals, and what is the punishment of uh, of uh, an adulterer, or adulteress, or is it stoning to death or not? So, in Surah Nisa four and Ayah fifteen, Wallati yatin al fahisha min nisaikum first tashidu alehin na arbaatam minkum. فَإِنْ شَيْدُوا فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ فِي الْبُيُوتِ حَتَّى يَتَوَفَّاهُنَّ الْمَوْتِ أَوْ يَجَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُنَّ سَبِيلًا And those from your women who come with obscenity, then from you take four witnesses on them, then if they bear witnesses, so detain them in the houses until the death is complete on them, or Allah will set away for, the, for, for them. This ayah is, is speaking about married women. If the believer's married woman comes from a faisha, or they go do the zina comes from a fire because Allah says, "Wala taqrubu zina inna kana faisha wasa sabila." Do not go near to adultery or fornication. It is a faisha. Faisha means in Arabic means obscenity, and it is a way to badness. So, if a married woman gets involved in extramarital affair or something like that, then she is not to be. She is to detain in the house. Detain them in your houses. Do not let them move around the houses until Allah. Finds a way, married woman, believers, believing woman. Then further it says in Surah Nisa, same ayat four sixteen. Walladani yat yani ha minkum fa adu huma fa in taaba waslaha fa adu an huma. Inna Allah kana tawab rahima. And if the two men, two two men comes with obscenity, hurt both of them. So if they both repent and correct, then avoid to hurt both of them. Surely Allah is of returning most merciful. Meaning if two men are indulging in themselves as homosexuals, so hurt both of them, hurt them. But if they repent, if they, if they repent and correct, then avoid to hurt both of them. Surely Allah is forgiving merciful. Then in 24 surah, Two ayah where non-married women, believing women and unbelieving or non-married women do a zina and fornication. A zaniya was zani fajdidu kulla wahid minuma miyata jaldatin walata khudkum bihima raafatun fi dini Allah. In kuntum tu minuna billah wal yawm al akhir wal yash adaba huma taifatun min al mu'minin. Then lash the fornicators and the fornicator, each and one of them with hundred stripes. And you do not hold on to have pity with both of them in the judgment of Allah. If you believe Allah in the hereafter. And let a party from the believers witness both their punishment. So if a, 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 a woman, a girl or a woman is addicted to fornication. You see, if I smoke a cigarette, I'm not a smoker. If I do a zina, I'm not a zani. Until I'm addicted to it. So here is no witness. Mean an adulter adulterer or a fornicator who is addicted, he exposes himself, he doesn't care. Then he becomes a zani. Then he, Allah says, if that person should be striped, hundred stripes, hundred stripes to the, it is a cure for a zani, a man or a zani woman, an adulterer or adulteress, for cure she should be, he or she should be punished, hundred stripes. But further, they should not be killed. Why? Because it says further 24, same ayah, 33 ayat, a zani la yankihu illa zaniya au mushika. Wa zaniyatu la yankihu illa zanin au mushik. Wa hurrima dhalik al mu'mineen. The fornicator does not marry except a fornicatress or a woman who associates with Allah. And the fornicatress does not marry except a fornicator or a man who associates with Allah. And that has been unlawful, forbidden over the believers. So if a fornicatress is, she, after the punishment, she marry 
a fornicator. Fornicator man should marry a fornicatress who associates. But for believers, it is forbidden that they marry a fornicatress or a fornicator. You understand? For believing women cannot marry a fornicatress. So Allah has made a forbidden for the believers to marry a fornicatress or a fornicator. But after the punishment, they are not to they are not to be killed or put to death. <laughs> then they should marry each other if they are indulging in this activity. Now I would like to further because if you were referring to a stoning stoning to death, you see the word rajam in Arabic means stone, and rajim also is the same derived from the same word rajam. It, an amazing thing is it has been used by Allah. It total word rajam and its, its other for, forms are used fourteen times. Seven times is used by Allah against the shaitan. Like we says, "Faida qaraat al Quran, first time billahi min al shaitan rajim." Whenever you read the Quran, seek Allah's protection from the shaitan, the rajim, who has been stoned. So Allah has stoned the shaitan seven times in the Quran. Allah is stoning the shaitan. Okay. and the other seven seven times is the unbelievers are stoning the believers or intend to stone the unbelievers are intending to stone the believers is mentioned in the quran like for example just gave you the references surah shura 2616 non believers intend to stone no no alisam no peace be peace be upon him in surah hud 1191 non believers intend to stone shoe peace be upon him Maryam 1946 non believer Ibrahim's father intend to stone his son Ibrahim peace be upon him Yasin non believer intends to stone the messengers in plural and Dukan 4420 Musa peace be upon mentioned the intention of Pharaoh to stone him Pharaoh intended to stone Musa peace be upon him and Surah Al-Kahf the believing companions of the Kahf mentioned that non believer believers intend to stone him so in the Quran 14 times this word has been used stoning and it is never used by allah that the believers should stone to non believers it is the non believers is stoning intending to stone the the believers and allah is stoning the shaitan this the, but if you look at the bible according to the bible jews and christian faith levites 2010 if the man commits adultery with another man's wife both adulterer and adulteress must be put to death so who believes that who believes this This is Jews and Christians believe, but who is practicing is a Jew, a Christian. Leviticus twenty eleven twelve thirteen forty. If a man and woman commits incest or any man have homosexuality, must be put to death. Again, biblical. Leviticus twenty verse nine. If the priest's daughter becomes prostitute herself, then she must be burned in the fire. Deuteronomy twenty two twenty twenty one. If there is no proof of girl's virginity. Then she should be stoned to death. This is biblical. Deuteronomy twenty twenty five: The man who meets a girl who pledges to be married and he rapes her, then his man should be put to death. Exodus twenty nineteen: Anyone who has sexual relation with an animal must be put to death. Death, death is very easy in Bible. All the time, put to death, put to death, put to death. This is all biblical. Yes, please. Okay. Assalamu alaikum brother. Wa alaikum assalam. Um my name is Adka Tafi and my question is um what does the Al-Qur'an says about a death penalty of the believer who does a uh, blasphemy and becomes a rejecter? Okay. You see the word first of all I would like to explain this word blaspheme. Blaspheme means what? Uh meaning of blasphemy is to speak impiously or irreverently of Allah or sacred things blaspheme to speak against Allah irreverently or impiously to speak about God to speak evil slander cursing and abusing to Allah and sacred things so now the crime of assuming to oneself the rights and the attributes and the qualities of God this is blaspheme word the blaspheme means a person who rejects assumes himself as god or to speak evil and bad things about sacred things is again about god this is blaspheme or reject so now what the quran has to say about these people who believe and rejects okay and can we put him to death 
what Surah Tawbah 9 and Ayah 74. يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ مَا قَالُوا وَلَقَدْ قَالُوا كَلِمَةَ الْكُفْرِ وَكَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِسْلَامِهِمْ وَحَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا عَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ فَإِنْ يَتُوبُوا يَكُوا خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَإِنْ يَتَوَلَّوْا يُعَذِّبَهُمُ اللَّهُ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَمَا لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ They take an oath with Allah that they said nothing. They, Allah is describing a situation about the people who are believed and then became non-believers. They take an oath with Allah, they said nothing. And Allah said, without doubt, they said a word of rejection, means they blaspheme. And they rejected after they accepted Islam. وَكَفَرُوا بَعْدَ Islamim, And they rejected after they accepted Islam. And they were interested with what they can never attain to. After becoming Muslim Islam, they want, they, their intentions were they never attained to do it. Ex and they did not revenge, except Allah and His Messenger enriched them from His bounty. They did, they, the revenge was when Allah and His Messenger enriched them from His bounty, means after getting the understanding and the essence of the message of Allah's ayahs, they were enriched financially, morally, and psychology. Then they rejected and they said against God and His Messenger. So, so Allah says, if they repent, it will be better for them. And if they turn away, Allah will punish them in this world and the hereafter with a painful punishment. And on the earth, there will be no one from the protector or helper for them. So the, this is very inter, in, important point. Now, after they rejected and become blasphemed to Allah and His Messenger, so Allah says that if they repent, it is better for them. And if they do not repent, then Allah will punish them in this world and in the hereafter. You are not God to do it. If suppose a believer becomes an unbeliever, who are you? It is his personal matter. It is between him and God. You are nobody to punish him. So because we are imitating God, this is blaspheme. That you imitate, you take the, uh, the law of God in your hand and act like a God. Astaghfirullah. It is Allah can punish very easily to anyone. He says Allah will punish him in this world and the hereafter. And if they repent, it's better for them because they rejected after being, they take Islam. وَكَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِسْلَامِهِمْ وَهَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا يَحْلِفُونَ اللَّهَ أَوْ مَا قَالُوا They take an oath with Allah, they did said nothing. The, وَلَقَدْ قَالُوا كَلِمَةَ الْكُفْرِ Allah says, without doubt, they said a word of rejection and blaspheme. وَهَمُّوا وَكَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِسْلَامِهِمْ And they did this after uh, uh, they accepted Islam. وَهَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا And they were interested with what they can never attain to. وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ And they did not revenge except that Allah and His Messenger enriched them from His bounty. This they did it after they were, Allah gave him enriched them with bounty. Now Allah says, فَإِنْ يَتُوبُوا يَكُوا خَيْرَ اللَّهُمْ if they repent, it will be better for them. If they turn away, meaning if they did not repent, turn away, Allah will punish them in this world and in the hereafter. Who will punish them? Allah, Allah will punish them. With a painful punishment. And on the earth, there will be no one from the protector and helper from them. This is, the, the, this is what the Quran has to say about, about this person who becomes blasphemous. But again, look at what the Bible has to say against who blaspheme. According to the Bible, Jews and Christians say, Leviticus 24, 10, 16, Anyone who blasphemes and curses Lord, God must be stoned to death. Again, death comes. There, Allah is not asking you to do it. Anyone who becomes a rejecter, Allah will punish. Here he says, anyone who blasphemes and curses his Lord, God must be stoned to death. Leviticus, then the Lord, Leviticus 24, 13, 16. Then the Lord sent to Moses, Take the blasphemer, rejected outside the camp. All those who heard him are to lay their hands on his head. And the entire assembly is to stone him. The whole assembly, take him out. And the whole entire assembly is to stone him on his head. Say to the Israelites, If anyone curses his God, 
he will he will be held responsible anyone who blasphemes the name of the lord must be put to death who are doing all this in this world people are doing it in the quran allah says allah will punish them the entire assembly must stone him whether an alien or a native born when when he blasphemes the name he must be put to death so this is the remember if in the quran if people blaspheme if they go against the quran they go against the ayat whatever after accepting islam after becoming believers still allah says if you ask for forgiveness it will be better for them but if they don't ask allah will punish them you we people have no criteria to put him to death the bible law says that if he blaspheme in the world so people should be so people who believe you know if something happens something says about god or something people say about god people the people start want to put him to death is biblical it's not islam it's not quran it's not the torah of the quran it's biblical torah of the bible yeah okay thank you thank so you. much assalamu alaikum wassalam my name is anna yeah uh, it's regarding uh, surah al maida 5 this one uh surah al maida 5 ayat 28 it's uh, definitely if you stretch out your hand towards me to kill me i am not the one to stretch out my hand towards you to kill you surely i fear allah the lord of the world my question is uh, are we allowed to run away from that person <laughs> you your question is that if you see if you see you must understand you may run but if the if if if, if, if that is there Yeah. even if you don't run allah will uh, save you you know uh, like i just don't want to give my example i was shot here if i would have been hit i would have been dead here dead dead it went from here and the bullet went i was there so if allah want to remember it is the time is fixed kullun nafsun zaiqatul maut and allah says in one i don't remember that i said the time is written down even you don't run away if if allah intends because your sacrifice to god You, why you we are afraid of death when we are good and we are reaching god reaching good pleasures of god that is the garden we are asking we are living for so if we do not run and if we want to give life for allah so where i'll go i will not be put in, just put into the dust yeah. i will be back I'll come back to life and i'll have the good pleasures of allah that is my striving anybody who in this world are working hard to make money and this how and then, then i have to good life right in this in this satan is making this. so now i have people believers should do for the other world in this world also yeah, allah is not asking don't this is the zina and adornment in this world is given to you but remember that will will come exactly the time is required you cannot die before you cannot increase the death so even if you run if you are going to allah if that is going to put you death you'll die so the question is that even if you run allah is because allah intended that this guy kills because it is even the wrong has been committed by the permission of god if somebody wants to kill somebody the permission is granted to the shaitan first of all shaitan wants to astray people so he asks the permission to god give me the time give me this i may astray people so now when he astrays people so the act of the shaitan and people get influenced and if that act is to is to be taken place is by the will of god none can die none can hurt anybody except by the permission of allah so even the shaitan has got the permission to do wrong and if the if the man that man who intended to, to kill was laid down by allah that man has to be killed so so what no no matter running if your death is there you will die right. okay thank you thank you assalam alaikum brother shaikh assalam um uh, my name is arshad mahmood and I, i would like to ask you a question in regards of uh, death penalty Okay. What the Quran says about uh, the one who uh, blasphemy, hurts, um, or kill the prophets um, of Allah. Okay. You. you see, there are verses in the Quran. Whenever the messengers came, they delivered the message. People never liked them, so they heard them. They said bad things about them, and it's recorded in the book. And still today, it is recorded. So it says in Surah Tawbah, nine, ayah sixty-one. ومنهم الذين يؤذون النبي ويقولوا هو اذن قل اذن خير خير لهم يؤمن بالله ويؤمن للمؤمنين ورحمه للذين امنوا منكم والذين يؤذون يؤذون رسول الله لهم عذاب اليم 
and and from them are those who heard the prophet and they say he is all ears say he is our, our for your betterment he believes with allah and for he believes the believers and a mercy for those who believe from them and those who heard the message of allah for them is a painful punishment again in this people are hurting the prophet by saying he is all ears meaning he is he hearing everything people's talks but allah says he hears he hears what is better for you meaning he will hear and give you advice good advice so this allah says if if the if the non believer or anybody hurts the prophet again he says walladina yu'duna rasulullah rasulullah whoever hurts the messenger of allah lahum adabun alim there is a punishment painful punishment from allah you see i am again repeating these things why because the punishment has to come from allah the messengers are from allah the book is from allah the deen is judgment is from allah inna deena inda allah islam surely the deen judgment is, uh, is islam from allah everything is from allah the punishment is of allah in the good pleasures you get good life in this world is from allah bad life from this by the de- permission granted to devil is from allah everything is from allah so why you want to take in your hands to do bad things so this is all education and surah mu'min 23 it says am yaquluna bihi jinna bal ja'um bil haqq wa aktharum lil haqqi karihun or they say with him is madness they call muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet that, that he was a mad person with him but he came to them with the truth and the majority of them have a disliking of the truth so even he was called a mad person but what happened did allah did people at that time believers the sahabas wanted to hurt the prophet, uh, hurt the people they didn't surah anfal 830 wa id yamkuru kal ladina kafaru li yudituka aw yaktuluka aw yukhrijuk wa yamkuru wa yamkuru allah wallahu khairul makirin and when those who rejected plan for you they bind you fix you or they kill you or they expel you out and they plan and allah plan allah is the best of the planners people at all times all the time people are and the quran you can read the ayahs and you can say when the messenger delivers the message the minority qalil the minority of the minority of all the minority of all the messengers believers were very less majority rejected them majority make a laugh on them they laugh at them mock at the prophets and the messengers but what was the reaction did did the believers punish them ke you are making a mockery of the messenger you you people don't we don't we don't take guidance from the book so this lectures are educating in in surah al imran 3 it says innal ladina yakfuruna bi ayatillah wa yaqtulun nabiyyan nabiyyina bi ghayri haqq wa yaqtulun alladhina ya'buruna bil qist min an nas fa bashum bi adab alim surely those who reject with ayat signs of allah they kill the prophets without the truth and they kill those from the people who order with justice then give good news to them with a painful punishment again allah says with the painful punishment from allah those who kill the prophets the prophets are killed psychologically the people who are doing good works in the nearness of god they are killed psychologically again and again allah says that allah will punish them who are you to take things in your hands who are you you are not god in surah in surah al qalam 682 ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnun allah is consoling the messenger with the blessings of your lord you are not of those who are mad you are not a mad person who are reading the ayahs and taking the guidance from the quran the muhammad peace be upon him and from him whoever today you and me anybody who is taking guidance from the people call him mad so allah say you are not mad you are not mad they are mad and surah muzammil 73 and ayat 10 wasbir ala ma yaqulun wahjurhum hajran jamila and have patience over what they say and leave migrate them leaving them migratingly gracefully this w- is very important it says was 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 bir ala ma yaqulun have patience what they say whatever people say about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or anybody you you are better you are stronger than god to take vengeance allah is ha- is more powerful can create the whole universe and the galaxies he can take vengeance with anybody he wants to so he says here that for you was bir ala ma yaqulun have patience what they say whatever they're saying have patience wajur and leave hajran jamila leave them alone with gracefully allah will take the punishment allah will put him into the fire 
Allah gave him punishment this for and the after. You and me are not to take any this penalty and doing hurtness or badness to other people. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. My name is Khalid. Okay. Um, as per your lecture, my understanding is that um, um, if the believers are, uh, as believers of Allah, we are not allowed to retaliate or take revenge against a killer, as surely Allah Almighty will punish that killer. But my question is, if that killer is, especially if it's a serial killer or a rapist or a child molester, if he's not held accountable in this world and is punished for his sins, he will keep on doing the same thing again and again. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You see, you see, uh, this, uh, <laughs> if he's a serial killer, he's a mad person, he's this, the, the, the government and they can put him to a, a confinement. But if you you who who wh how who made him the serial killer? Is a psycho psychopath who made him? Abnormal child who made him? A deaf child who made him? It's God. So everything that you see in the world, you must understand a, a, a serial killer psychopath is also creation by God. A man who's a deaf person can't see, or he's deaf, he can't see, he can't speak, deaf and dumb is born, or he's retarded. All is done by Allah. For us to take guidance and take lessons from them. So now this guy, that, that man you are talking about, even the, the world, do not punish them because he's a mad person. For serial killers, I, I, as I, far as I know, the mad person. He's a mad person. He's not being killed because accountable because mad. Is that right? So, so now you must understand, I would like to read a few ayahs in telling you that Surah Anam 6 and 65, look at the power Allah says for these people who are doing wrong. قُلْ هُوَ الْقَادِرُ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابًا مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ أَوْ مِنْ تَحْتِ أَجُلِكُمْ أَوْ يَلْبِسَكُمْ شِيعًا وَيُذِيكَ بَعْضَكُمْ بَعْسَ بَعْضٍ انظر كيف نصرف الآيات لعلهم يفقهون Say he has, he has power to appoint over you a punishment from above you or below your feet and clothe you into sex and make you take the misery, taste the misery of one another fighting each other. See how we inflect the ayahs so that they may understand. Now, you understand this, this Allah says He has got the power to appoint over you a punishment from above you or from below you. How the punishment comes from above you? The hurricanes, the storms, and below is the earthquake. Japan, Kashmir, or America, the cities in Bangladesh. You can see this, everything is moving. Hundreds and thousands of people are killed. Just like that. So, so Allah is there, he's, he's giving you punishment. And further he said then, and clothes you into sex. Meaning he covers you into sex so that you, and takes the misery of each other. So he says, and makes you, into clothes you into sex and make you taste the misery of each other. So now, one is that the punishment is natural disasters. The other is by making you into sex and divide you. So that you keep on fighting and killing each other. This is the punishment of God Almighty. So the killer doesn't get away, he gets killed. And this guy gets killed, and this guy gets killed. Everybody is being killed. So th this is the law of the punishment is, is being carried on. So we must be very careful. And Allah further says in Surah Maira 5.33, إِنَّمَا جَزَاءُ الَّذِينَ يُحَارِبُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَسْعَوْنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَسَادِ أَوْ يُقَتَّلُوا أَوْ يُصَلَّبُوا أَوْ تُقَتَّ عَيْدِهِمْ وَارْجُلُهُمْ مِنْ خِلَافٍ أَوْ يُنْف Surely the reward of those who wage war against Allah and His Messenger, they move around in the earth to cause corruption, is that they will be killed, or they will be crucified, or their hands cut off, and the feast be cut off from the opposite sides, and they will be exiled from the land, from them that is disgrace in the world, and the hereafter is a great punishment. Again, this all Allah is not asking you to do it. Because they are waging wars against Allah and Messenger, the result is what? They, they are king being killed. Because everybody is waging war against Allah and His Messenger. Who is fighting Allah and His Messenger? Who is fighting Allah? The Quran says the, the, the reward of those who wage war against Allah and His Messenger. And they move around in the earth to cause corruption. If you are involved in this activity, what will happen? That you will be killed. You will be crucified. 
your hands will be cut off from this hand or this feet will be cut off of the upper side or they will be exiled from the land. From them that is disgrace in this world and for the hereafter is a great punishment. So this is going on. Any war you are talking about is basically a war against Allah's messenger. So people can see that they are being killed, they have been crucified, they have been, their hands have been cut off from opposite sides or hands and feet and they are exiled from the land. Except again Allah says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا مِنْ قَبْلِ عَيْنْ تَقْدِرُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Except those who repent, turned from before the believers, evaluate, gain power over them by guiding them that how Allah accepted their repentance. Then surely Allah is forgiving, merciful. Meaning, if you are involved in these kind of activities, you will be killed, you will be crucified, or you will be thrown out from the land. Except the believers guide you so that you take repent, your repentance is accepted by Allah, so you will be saved. Otherwise, the result is there. Whoever wage war against Allah's messenger, the result is he will be killed, he will be crucified, he will be, he will, hands will, and feet will be cut off from upper side. Anyone, everything is by Allah. We are just, have to be on the right side. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, just one question, please. Thank you. Only <coughs> alaikum, yes, please. If it's a small question, if a big answer. Yeah, that is a really small question okay. because uh, look, my question is not on this topic today. Oh. My question is general question regarding for Australia. We are yep. living in the society that there is no Islamic law, and when we go to the court and they put in their own law. What actually we have to do as Islamic, you know, as a Muslim, we're not can you, implementing. Can you, yeah, can you tell me any Australian law that contradicts your law? All laws. It's Give like, me one. One, the, uh, like family law. Yeah. Suppose, in family law, what they're saying that there is no Sharia. There is no, you know, if the woman is actually divorced, a man, so in Islamic law that he, she is not entitled to have any money from the husband. But here, no, there is a 60, 50, 50, 40, there is a ratio. Yeah, let, let's take one by one. Yes. i just give you the answer. If you're a believer and your wife is a believer, first of all, you have to go through the, your Islamic understanding if you're practicing believing when to divorce. No. Now, just yeah. hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, the problem is <laughs> the general question, like, like a man, label man, label Muslim carrying a Muslim label and a label carrying a Muslim woman. Now, this problem occurs and then you go to the court and this is what they decide. I know believing men, I know believing women, myself, who went to the court in Canada and said, this is, this, is the, this is what we decided, this is how we are going to divorce, they accepted. Mm -hmm. The problem is, you want to fight your law against the, your law, what law? Your Quran but, doesn't, Quran, what is the process of Quranic divorce? And what is, first of all, you must know, when I got married, I did not know to whom I, go, I have to marry. The Quran speaks about what the Quran says about nikah, the marriage. Mm -hmm. Then the Quran speaks about what the Quran says about husband-wife relationship. I have delivered these talks. I do not know to whom I should marry first. Then I do not know how, what relationship I should have, a good healthy relationship. I do not know. Then I do not know what is the steps of divorce. And then I do not know when to divorce. I do not know these three, three things, believe me as a believer. Since I do not know, then I want to confront, I, I can live any part of the world and practice these laws. No, no government will pro create problem for me. If you okay. practice, they, they are not coming in your house and say your believe your wife should not no, no, pray. Okay. And say, so, no, if the wife is went to the court in Australia. Because she's not practicing a believer, woman. Oh. She went to the court because she's going by the law of the, uh, Australia. If you both agree, look, first of all, the Quran, when the Quran tells you what to divorce, if she's a believing woman, she must know what is the criteria of divorce. Mm -hmm. Why she's taking a divorce and why you are giving a divorce. You know, there's only two things are allowed. If the woman cannot have children from you, she can take a divorce. Or you can, have, she, you can have sexual relation with her, she can take a divorce. And you can, she can take a divorce, you are not a believer. Believer in the nearness of God. Otherwise, there is no question of divorce in, in Islam. These are the three reasons mentioned in the Quran. So the question, we do not know that. We are going by what the people are saying, this divorce, by, because we are carrying a, la, carrying a label of a Muslim and we are practiced like this. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any, anyone question? Okay, we just end the Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming and making this event successful. And also, I would like to extend our thanks to people who are watching us live in Pakistan. Thank you very much. Canada, America, and UK. Thank you, and Salaam Alaikum. Peace on you.